queries are concerned, that's what we want to do with. Good morning, guys. I want to deal with all the queries and concerns regarding applications to the Home Office that are over six months. So, um, if you are on now, can you just share the message to your friends and families that are in the United Kingdom or that have concerns with their submissions to the Secretary of State for the Home Department in the United Kingdom? My name has not changed, Okumbo Lagbaye. We are on a live chat right now. So, I want all of us to share it and send it to our friends and families to join me right now. On the issue of immigration and nationality law in the United Kingdom, it's an area of concern and it will never stop because we have large borders. Our borders are quite large, you know, and very sensitive and complex. And as a result of that, because of our position in the, in the, in the, in the world, we must at all times control our borders so that we will not allow Dick and Ari to enter into the United Kingdom. In order to prevent that, the government introduced so many laws you know, to control who and who will have access into the United Kingdom and who and who will be able to remain in the United Kingdom. That is the reason why we have several laws passing at the same time under immigration law, immigration and nationality law. Excuse me. So I want to encourage you if you are out there, join me every time you see my program join me you will make common sense from it it's an educative line so it will educate you your friends and family will benefit from it it will move you forward and give you the enlightenment you needed or you required in your daily lives when you are in the uk good morning to you everyone i appreciate you thank you for coming on we're talking about the issue of immigration and nationality law if you are in the uk this is an area of topic that you will need most for you to pass to your family and friends who want to come to united kingdom you know good morning you're on a live chat good morning to you If you can't speak and you call my line, I'll be very angry with you. So check your network very well before you start calling me. There is no much time to spare. And as a result of that, I would like to give my time to those who will need it mostly and will benefit from it. I have a lot of work to do, as you may not be aware that I have been away for some time. But at the same time, I still have to answer back to public that I, you know, cherish most and that are, you know, always in support of my work. And as a result of that, I want to deal with questions and answer and queries people are having with regards to their immigration and nationality issue. Whether your family wants to enter UK, what problem they encounter at the border, or what problem they encounter with the entry clearance officer in terms of submission, or if you want to remain in the UK, you have submitted an application, it's been in there for over six months, you have not heard back from the Secretary of State agent, then join me right now, Tokumbo Olagbaye. On the issue of how to regularize um, your status in the United Kingdom, that is what we are talking about. We haven't changed our topic, and that is what I am famous for in the UK, majorly on how to regularize status in the United Kingdom. I applaud you coming on one by one. I thank you for all your support from time to time, and I give God glory to your life. I want to encourage you to share my program, to give it to people that will need it most, let them connect with me on 07908-628-240. 07908-628-240. A lot of people have queries and concerns, but they don't know how to go about it. That is the reason why I'm here, to see if I can resolve matter as quickly as possible. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Are you Mr. Bibola? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Your number is saved already. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Right. Ekaro, ma'am. Ekaro, sir. I'm on a live program. Are you okay? I'm on a live program. Okay, sir. All right, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Why do you want me to come back, ma'am? Um, if you don't want to discuss your matter now, then you have to call me after show. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. I'll call around 2 o'clock, 
Okay, all right, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, bye. So I want to encourage everyone that are around available this morning. You know, I am always a serious candidate and I don't take my work lightly. I take my work very seriously. So I want people to believe what I say to them. If you have queries or concerns about your immigration and nationality, then this is an arena for you to resolve the matter in a public arena now. Call me because I cannot read all the typing people are sending to me. You want me to deal with a query, you are sending me an episode of pages to read when I have thousands of people to answer to on the same line. So it is not possible for me. So please, can you type one line alone is enough. For example, I'm in the UK, I have submitted for over six months. I have not heard from them, what can I do? Simple. But don't do me stories of how you entered and how long you have been in the UK. I haven't got the time to read it. Please bear it with me. I am not being proud. Um, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, ma. Good morning, my dear. How are you? Do you have to do what? Six months is the six months is the normal cut off time. Six months is normal time. Anything outside six months, then there is a problem. But six months is the is the is the managing time that the government has introduced for many years. So I would encourage everyone to just bear it with them if your application is under six months. But when it's outside six months, then you can make phone call or write a letter and ask for further information. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello. Good morning, ma. Good morning to you. Yes, that's correct. Uh, good morning, ma. Yeah, um, I tried calling yesterday, but I was told you went on break. Uh, um, please, ma, um, I need uh, your help. I need a solicitor for um, assistance at work. So uh, when I called yesterday, your receptionist said uh, you only do um, uh, immigration. I'm on a life program now. I'm on a life program. So... Uh, there is no way you can be discussing your matter on a live chat like this. So please, hands off and call back later. Okay, ma. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma. Okay? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Hello? Hello, good morning, ma. Hello? Yeah, good morning to you. Did you submit your application by yourself? Do you, have you got a lawyer that? I gave it to lawyer. Then tell your lawyer to write for an update. You don't have to do the hassle work. If you have paid us to do a job, then it is down to us to do the job properly. You don't have to go through the headache anymore. We will do the headache for you once you have paid us our professional fees. Oh, okay. So speak to, speak to your lawyer. Speak to your. Which means there's nothing he or she can do at this stage other than to just hang around and wait for them. What type of application, if I may ask? Is, yeah, is the application, I got to an EAB. So it's an extension? It's an extension? Huh? You went in for extension? Mm -mm. It's supposed to be out by now. You shouldn't be experiencing that huge uh, delay. But... but I don't know. I don't know. It might be the caseworker not available that they change caseworker. If they change caseworker, it will affect your interest. You know, yeah. If they change caseworker, in no doubt, it will definitely affect you. So uh, I would suggest that you probably continue to wait if your lawyer has written to them in the last three months again. Yes, I, I, I myself, I even called them, and I don't know. They said they could get back to the even the lawyer said you can call now. 
Just keep on waiting. If your lawyer has, if the, your lawyer has done his own part, then the advice is to keep on waiting. Okay, yeah. Thank you. okay dear. Yeah, bye. We are talking about the issue of what is happening in the home office and why people are waiting outside six months to get their status, um, either first application or non a renewal. Um, call me on 07908-628240. My name hasn't changed. The issue of immigration and nationality law is a very complex and administrative area of law, which is not easy unless you are on top of the gear. I have just recently bought some heavy book again to update me, which they delivered to me in my absence while I was away, but I've got it back. And inside that book, I am seeing a lot of big changes that's going to shake the immigrants in the uh, in the united kingdom the changes will shake have a big shake up of the immigrants in the united kingdom so i don't want you to be too free and thinking that nobody can catch you if you have not registered with me to take me as your lawyer i think this is an arena for you now it's an opportunity for you to quickly book appointment come to office and come and register your interest you have a gp so you should have a lawyer and that is what I will tell you. You have a GP. Thank you so much, Kemi Akin Lagoon. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thanks to all of you that are just welcoming me back. Thank you so much. It shows that you are just online to see me. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You know, um, you have a registered GP. So also you should have a lawyer that will be on hands on. You know, will be on top of your gear. If anything happens or goes wrong with you, between you and the officers in the diaspora, that is the only way out. If you don't have a lawyer, you are going to fall foul because in no doubt in my mind, it will definitely affect your interest. And it will be difficult for you to have somebody. It might be at the time that you are looking for a lawyer and you cannot even get phone call through, things are a bit tight. But if you have a particular lawyer, then it shows that you are in safe hand and you can have something to rely on. Thank you. Good morning, Kemi Jose. Kemi, yeah. Thank you so much. Kemi Akilago, Kemi Jose, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks to all of you. Um, Oma Mike said that I want to ask why are they still taking people to court when the child is seven years plus? Well, it's, that is their prerogative. It is now down to lawyer to use the tools in the law to, um, to fight them back because it's still within the law and it has not been taken off from the book but that is their prerogative so don't forget they have power to do and undo but if the law is there and it's stated clearly that a child will be able to make application for leave to remain if they have put the foot down they have established themselves in the united kingdom under seven years rules then a good lawyer will be able to use some precedents you know some precedent to fight the mechanism but what the law is saying is that you have to show the impact it will have the effect of it if that child is taken away from the united kingdom so it is not just an application ordinarily it is an application that you must be able to prove that if this child is removed or uprooted to the other part of the world bear it in mind this child was born in the uk and this child has no knowledge of any other country at all. If that kind of child is uprooted, it means that the whole system, the whole, the whole situation of that child will be, will have to be rearranged again. And it's not going to be easy. A child that cannot speak Yoruba or speak Igbo or speak Hausa and learn only English in school and at home would find it difficult to stay in Nigeria. And if a child is forcefully moved out of the United Kingdom, there will be no way for parents to settle quickly in Nigeria to get money to put that child in a British school in Nigeria. Because the child is, the parents probably still finding their roots, their feet on ground in the UK, so they will not be able to afford money. The fees that they have been, have been paid on children that goes to boarding school or go to um, private school in Nigeria, they are quite dearer. And I know it's from fact, from experience, from topic, from, from what I have seen on ground. 
So as a result of that, when application is going in on a seven-year road, road there, has, there are so many things that would have to be put in place. It is not just a mere fact of saying that, oh, the child has clocked seven years, so it must be granted automatically. It is not an automatic because it's not, it is not a concession. It's outside the rules. So it's not something that you can just say that, yes, it is a must, it will happen. No. So we need to look into that. We have to be careful. We have to follow it when we are making an application. But of course, on my mic, in response to the question you asked, and I've said it earlier, the government has power. And that is why they inserted the word reasonable and unreasonableness. It is now down to us as a lawyer to say it's unreasonable to remove that child. Because the government is saying it is reasonable and put out points. The lawyer will now say it is unreasonable because this child was born in the UK and has lived all this or her life in the United Kingdom, British birth certificate. The, gov the, the judges are saying that a British child for a British education, but that child has not obtained British passport. So which means that his or identity is unknown at the moment. And as a result of that, her identity will be her parents' identity, which is her parents' nationality. That is what government is saying, and that is what judges are trying to interpret. Until a child obtains British passport in the United Kingdom, to a parent that hasn't got status, the child is not British. But a child that has British parents and hasn't got British passport is British automatically. So that's the difference. The difference is that the child that has British parents is British, regardless of what happens. But the child that the both parents hasn't got papers, status in the UK, cannot be British until that child obtain British passport like this. If the child obtain British passport, the child will continue to be a British citizen for the rest of his or her life. But if that child has not obtained that, then the child cannot be a British citizen unless one of the parents has British status or a settlement status. So that is the difference between the child that's born to an immigrant family and the child that's born to British family, British parent. So we should get that differently. So the issue of going to court on seven years, yes, the government has power to do that. When you have a good lawyer, then you can pr pr prove it. Like I said to you, the case that we took to court on the, on the lady that has a British child, but because they could not obtain the father to do DNA with the child, and the case went to court. Remember I said to you before I travel, I won that case because in my absence, they have sent me the determination and the appeal, I won the appeal. Because I proved to the judge on that day that hold on a minute, when two people are not in marriage relationship and they are just in one stand relationship, anything can happen. And if a man is in another relationship with his wife that is legal, that he legally married to, he will not want to stick himself out to the girlfriend or to a one night stand or enjoyment life outside. Besides, the law the government introduced on issue of child obtaining British passport, that particular child was born before that cut off period. So therefore, the caseworker that refused the application at the time has little experience on that particular knowledge, on, on that particular guidance. Because the caseworker must always revise to the home office guidance before they make decision. But unfortunately, the majority of them has it, they are not equipped enough to understand the home office guidance. But they want to work for home office, but they don't understand the guide. You must know the guide. If home office staff doesn't understand how to read guide, then they will be making a rational, stupid decision. And as a result of that, it will be affecting clients in terms of financial capability to make money, to have money to pay lawyers. The time to wait in court to see judge to get case heard, and then the stress to take that case to court itself. It's unfair to people that have legitimate claim. Because their legitimate expectation is that they have put in the right application, so they should be granted. That child was born to a father that has British passport. Regardless of the situation between the mom and the dad, the child should not be, you know, smart. And besides, as part of the reason why the home office caseworker got it wrong, is that in a situation when you are proving and you, are, you can satisfy that the information the applicant provided is untrue or is incorrect, they usually revoked British passport. They did not revoke that British passport. British passport was given back to my client. And those are the weapons that are used against them in court. Unfortunately, they knew they got it wrong, so they didn't attend court on that day. So we won. 
So I win that case successfully. So if you have any similar situation like that that's bothering you, just book appointment, come and see me. I'll check the guidance for you. I'll check the rules for you. And I will advise you to go and advise your lawyer. And tell your lawyer this is the situation that your lawyer must follow. And that's it. I am not saying that you should bring your case, but if you fancy me to, for me to represent you, why not bring it to my desk and I will eat it? Because every case that comes to my office, I assess them. I don't eat dirty food and I don't take leftovers. So I check them and make sure that they have qualitative measure. And once they have that, the case will go in smoothly. You know, I will not take a case that I want to go, I will go to court and I will look stupid in the presence of my colleague home office or in the face of the judge that want to see me and see what I have, cap I am capable of saying. And that is why we must get it right. Now, when we talk of the issue of seven years, seven years has not been taken off. It's still there. So we need to look at your case and we need to look at your individual situation as to the reason why you cannot return back to your country of origin. We have to assess it and discuss and look at it whether it will be devastating for that child if he's be, if he if he's, if he were to be removed from the United Kingdom. As for the parent, it might not be devastating because you knew intentionally to stay behind because you knew that you did not renew your visa while you were in the UK. But for a child that's innocently born into that situation, we have to look at that child's situation and say, hold on a minute, this child has formed life in the UK, has friends, has everybody in the United Kingdom. He does not believe that he comes from any other world apart from UK. UK is the only place he believes. So therefore, to now uproot that kind of child to another country will be immense, will be totally out of it. It will derail the whole plan. And it can affect the, the rest of that child's upbringing or growth, rather, and educating education system. Bear it in mind, it is not easy for a child to settle back into another country when they are uprooted. Because from experience, I know what I'm talking about. When my parents relocate back to Nigeria in those days, my, my big sisters find it difficult to settle on time. Even me, myself, I find it difficult to settle on time to eat the food in Nigeria and to mingle with people there. It was difficult. But bear it in mind, I was, I was born as British, so my situation was different. My parents go back because the situation in Nigeria was much better than the situation in England then. The pounds to Naira, Naira was heavy than pounds at that time. So it wasn't pounds that was heavy. It was, it was Naira that was more valuable than pounds when I went back with my parents to Nigeria. But I was always having, I always have my British passport, so I traveled with British passport to Nigeria. So it wasn't that I was uprooted. So it was out of convenience. They were, it's convenient for them. It's easy for them because we were going into employment straight away. And they were returning back to their father's land. That is what they did then. But it was difficult for we children that were born into the UK system to settle back there into Nigeria. So you should be thinking from that angle. The same thing will be applicable to these children that are born in the UK. Bear it in mind, their parents hasn't even got status to return back. So it's going to be so difficult, different from our own situation that we went with our, our parents in happy mood. You know, that is the time that they will meet you with music, with everything. So it's different from the situation of today. And that is why parents must have a qualitative argument. When it comes to the issue of seven years, seven years is not automatic. It's still within the rules, but we must be able to show as a lawyer, it will be unreasonable to uproot that child from the United Kingdom unreasonable the word unreasonable has to be inserted so if your application is out there or you are considering making an application please put in application just book appointment and come and see me there is no problem in terms of that i haven't got any problem book appointment and come and see me there is something inside seven years that i always use for my clients lately all those that want their appeal cases in court will know what we have put in we we'll put forward for them in our argument and there is no doubt it's, it's working perfectly because it's the law. It's not outside the law. It's within the law. So you use the law to argue for law. And clients will benefit from it. When lawyer knows what they are talking, clients benefit a lot. So we are still on the same issue. We are still on the same issue as to regularize your status on 07908-628240. 07908-628240. You can call my office directly to book appointment if you want to see me on 0208. 309-8808. Tokumbo Olagbaye is my name. 
at 11 o'clock i will leave line so i want to thank you i want to appreciate you uh mr benga good morning sir good morning so 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 sir i hope you are still enjoying yourself in nigeria and your business are going well there well done i am now back in the united kingdom mr bola oladu nefarure good morning ma bayo good morning bola good morning ganiat Good morning, ma. Having British child and filed on the status on the child, and it had taken more than six months. What can I do? Ask your lawyer for an update. Ask your lawyer to write to them to ask for an update. If you have a British child and you make an application to the Secretary of State to regularize under that child, and it had taken more than six months, it was it may be because of the, as a result of the what what we have uh, backlogs. Which I can vividly say to you that they are now clearing it now, so we are receiving it back, and people are now having their status before Christmas. So please ask your lawyer for an update. Ask your lawyer to write so that you can have an update. Morning, Alaji Rasak Sani. Morning, Fumi Christiana. JK, JMK, uh, uh, Good Heritage. Good morning. Kike Awojobi, Good morning. Um, Neyo Uluwale, Olamile Kain, Deojikutu. Good morning. Justice Momkoka. Good morning. Let's see Ayolu Funke. Good morning, my dear. Shola Adioshun. Good morning, darling. Rote Baba. Good morning. Giwa Alamileka. Good morning. Titi Lope Ajo Male. Good morning. Princess Adepeju Uluokwa Biodun. Good morning. Ojekwe Kedubos. Good day, lawyer. Good day to you, dear. Anna. Good morning to you. BC Alajolu. Good morning, my dear. Temi Tokwe Uguleye. Good morning. Good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for your support all the time. And on fair, good morning. Yesterday, Lawal, good morning. Omo Mike, good morning. Shegun Israel, Onyilomo, on point, good morning. Akwesi Ola Lanre, Fatogun, good morning. Abolale, I know, good morning. Claire Umutesi, what if the parents have indefinite leave but not the British passport? Please, ma. If the parent has British and um, indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom, the child will be entitled to the same status if they apply at the same time. But if the child is born after when they have acquired that, the child can have it. And if the child is born in the UK, the child can still have British passport. So it depends on the scenario and the situation. So take proper advice, but the child will be entitled to a permanent status or British passport, regardless of either. Okay? Clear. I hope I've answered your question there. That's a good point, Ma. I will I will read you. Thank you. I can't remember which of the points. Biodujo, thank you. Good morning. And Momo, good morning. Salimot Adenike Ibrahim, good morning. Faith Adeola Rogers, good morning. Kemni Jose, good morning. Kemi Akin Lagun, good morning. Ulu Ashimawe, good morning. Omo Wumi Koshima Nemoto, good morning. Sisi Ojofeti, good morning. Aderon Kea can be good morning. Bo Ebemi Obaulua, good morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for the other day. You're most welcome, my dear. But I can't remember what I've done the other day. But good morning to you. JMK, good day. Good morning, ma. More of God's grace. Thank you so much for your support at all time, JMK. So all those who are coming tomorrow, I'm still expecting. I am not running away from the gift. I'm get, you're getting your gift tomorrow. But I can only deal with the first 50. You know, first 50. So keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You have done so much and you deserve the gift that I want to give you tomorrow. So you have worked tirelessly for me in your support, coming online to support me all the time. I want to show you my love. I want to show you my appreciation. I want you to know that, and I want you to know that I actually love you dearly and I cannot take my mind away from you because your support is immensely brief. Um, important and it's something that cannot be compared to any other you know you cannot compare it to any other support yours is different on this platform I I applaud you and I say more 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 of the, your support is required in this journey thank you well baby I'm now enjoying my leave to remain in London may God bless you ma amen <laughs> I am now enjoying my leave to remain in London may God bless you ma okay thank you <laughs> Thank you. I don't even know that person. Hola, Kinzo, good morning. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Of course, you have to enjoy because it was obtained peacefully. We work hard with prayer to get everything that we've done in this office. So when I get your status for you, don't panic. It's automatic. It's, it's real. It's genuine. It's not uh, any other way around. So you can travel in and out, get I advice from me. 
and then I guide you, you know, go in and out of UK and come back on time. That is just what government is saying and continue to contribute into the economy of this beautiful country for us, you know, and that is when we can know that you appreciate what we have done for you. Contribute back into the economy of the United Kingdom. Thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Okay. Okay. Bimbo here. Okay. Serena can speak to you. Um, I'm trying to bring somebody from Nigeria. Okay. We've been married for a while. We had a breakup in between the okay. marriage. Okay. And we just reconsider back. Okay. And I want him to come and live with me. But I do go to Nigeria now and then. I just decided early this year, and I was thinking of doing a visiting for him to come, because he came in 2010, when my mom died, yeah, okay. and he went back, like, three days before his six month visa runs out, mm -hmm. he went back to Lagos, mm -hmm. then, after when we had a broken off, Mm -hmm. He tried to apply by him, by himself, mm -hmm. and they asked him at the home office, like in Nigeria, when they went for the interview, do you know anybody here? He said no, mm -hmm. because we were not together then. Mm -hmm. Then he was refused, mm -hmm. and he didn't bother to appeal. Mm -hmm. He just left here as that. Mm -hmm. And I've just given him an invitation letter mm -hmm. for this Christmas mm -hmm. that I want him to come around to spend Christmas with me. Mm -hmm. And and I did a show to you a thousand pounds mm -hmm. that you will surely go back. Mm -hmm. Have you submitted the application? Has the application gone to the entry clearance? Yeah, he's actually, he submitted his application this Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. L listen, listen, let's call the long story short because of others that want to call him. Regardless of whatever amount you put down, if the person that is coming into the United Kingdom hasn't got a strong community ties with Nigeria, his visa will not be granted. And what we mean by strong community ties is, is employment first. If it's your partner, his employment is first. And a house or a property in Nigeria or land. It does. It does. Those needs to be put forward. Do you understand? And if he has not married before or has, has married, children, he will have to show that he has children. You know? So a strong community ties with Nigeria we indicate that yes a visa will be granted okay. and that's it okay. i guess so i guess so okay. yeah thank you very much you're most welcome thank you dear bye bye dear bye the question the young lady just asked is that he has a friend that wants to come she has a friend that wants to come and visit him her in in england she has put some money down as a bond to the government of the United Kingdom to assure them that her visitor will return back to Nigeria successfully after the holiday or the, or the short after the short stay. Now that is a good point, but that is not final. The reason why I said it's not final is to do with the fact that if the person coming hasn't got strong community ties with Nigeria, the application will not be granted, and that's just the point. He has to got a strong community tie. Once he has strong community ties with Nigeria, then the government, the entry clearance on behalf of his Majesty Home Secretary in the United Kingdom will now make a decision whether the person is financially viable to take care of him or herself while in the United Kingdom. And that's just the point. And that's just it. For fiancé visa, those one needs to show strong community ties in their country. And Mark, if the person fiance visa does not have to show because you that you i love you the lord you are very straightforward thank you thank you Anatafe. thank you <laughs> thank you 
if the person come in to meet the person in the UK, if the person in the UK has met, because they've changed the rules, the person in the UK must have been handed some money for fiancé visa, 18,600. They are checking them on it now as well. So they're not escaping it anymore. Because the meaning is that as soon as they entered and the marriage is done, he can then make, he or she can make application to the Secretary of State to stay here permanently. So they will assess the partner on 18,600. The issue of community ties is not really assessed on that. It's assessed on visitors coming into the UK. But those who are coming to meet partner, they don't assess them much on that community ties. You know. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thank you, Anotafe. Thank you so much for that comment. For fiancé, yeah, we've answered that. Good morning, Ma. Dumila, good morning, Ma. Great work you are doing. May God bless you and, you and yours in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Dumil. Dumila, thank you so much, my dear. Adeyemi, good morning. Office is going to open in January. I haven't discussed well with the office and see what time we will be back. Because bear it in mind that the calendar is a bit... Uh, the calendar is a bit everywhere, you know. Um, Monday is 1st of January. So, of course, in the United Kingdom, people will return back to work on Tuesday straight away. We have court case in this office on Tuesday, but I'm not the one representing. So, I'm not coming to office on Tuesday. Second day after January, I don't even know where I will be. So, I'm not coming to work on 2nd of January. I probably will be thinking of coming on the 4th or 5th. So, I can leave office to come back on Thursday, on the 4th. So I will, I will discuss with the office and see which of the dates, and I'll put it out to public. But I'll have the emergency line, which will bring me to office anytime, in, uh, except Christmas Day. It's only on Christmas Day that I will not come to office. But anything outside Christmas Day, I will come to office on emergency if people need me. But on Christmas Day, you cannot get me. But after, outside Christmas Day, Boxing Day, 27, 28, 29, 30, except Sundays, you will find me, I will come to office on emergency to come and work and attend to client need. Definitely, I will leave my clients on the street or leave them at the detention. And none of my clients will go into detention this year. None of my clients will experience any deportation or removal because they have never experienced it, so they will never experience it. My clients will not be removed, and that is what I'm saying categorically. None of my clients will face any problem. The one that, they, that faced problem two days ago, that I arrived into UK, as soon as I make phone call, they release him for me because application was inside already. When God is working with you, you can experience it in a very beautiful way. None of my clients in this year and coming year and forever will experience deportation, removal, or any problem with the stakeholders of the government in this country. As long as they bring their case to me, they will not experience problem. Hello, my dear. Hello, ma. I'm just calling to uh, make a requirement. Okay, um, okay. The reason why I'm calling is, uh, I think I've been there before once, but there is one lawyer I went to, and he told me that I can still apply under my dad. What? Because my dad has been in this country for like 20 something years. And so what I passport is your dad holding? What past what type of passport your dad is holding? He's citizen passport. British citizen. Yes. An adult cannot apply under their British parents. Because I'm older I'm, I'm, I'm more than forty years. Exactly. So it's not possible to apply under your dad unless you were born at the time your dad have a, a, a pass British passport. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So it's not it's not possible. No adult child can apply under parents. No, no, no. It's a lie. You just they just want your money to go into the drain. You just want to give money out for fun. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. You. Yeah, bye. Let's reiterate that question straight away. The question she asked is that somebody told her that she can make application under her dad. Now she's over 40. She's a full-blown adult. That is impossible. It is not possible for an adult child to make application under British parent. An adult child cannot make application under British parent. It's impossible. It will not succeed. So let's get that right quickly so that we don't mix it up. Okay. Somebody said I have a case that is causing me pain. That's fine. And they want to make appointments to come to me. From um, That's fine. 
so that is the situation. So when we talk of things about immigration and nationality law, it is not on one thing. It's several. There are so many. We have it under asylum. We have it under seven years rule. We have it under parents. We have it under partner. We have it under a British citizenship. We have it under long residence. We have it on students. We have it on tiers, on people on point based system. So it's quite large. Immigration and nationality rules are quite large. You know, this is an area that one must be able to study it perfectly and understand the changes in the law from time to time. There is not an area one can just one can just mess with, you know. And as a result of, of that, I love to encourage people when it comes to making application to the Secretary of State, please take advice first. Because when you are buying clothes or shoes and bags, you do you see it's really bad. The network is quite um, disturbing in the arena here. But at the same time, I want to encourage everyone to please understand that the network is quite bad. It's nobody's flagging, it's the network. It's fluctuating sometimes because I can see it here from my office, from my point here. It's fluctuating. I don't know the reason why. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello, how are you, ma? I'm very well, thank you. Good morning to you, sister. Yeah, yes, I just want to make inquiries. Please go ahead quickly. Yeah, uh, I'm married to a British citizen. Okay. And she was born here. Is she a UK citizen? No, she's not. But her children were born here. She went back. She didn't get any stay. So we brought her now. We are fighting for interviews. She only has to be stopped beside. The military has to be stopped beside. She has been here almost four years ago. I couldn't get that information clearly. So we, we, we probably will need somebody to come to office and come and give me the download. No, no, no. Okay, let me repeat it, ma. Okay. What year? What year? 1974. Okay. Yeah. And when the mom born him, she went back to Africa. Okay. So she didn't get any stay, she went back. Okay. So after four years ago, we applied for her to come here as a visitor. You applied for the child, for the for your partner? No, for the mom, for the mom. Okay. Okay. So now we are invited to come here four years ago. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so now we are trying to apply for her for state to refuse. They have to refuse her because you have not shown to the government beyond doubt the reason why it will be necessary for them to grant the It's the one that is the reason why they are. Yeah. yeah. All right. You must welcome. Thank you. There is a bit of a poor wireless in this area at the moment. I don't know why. So I have to cut this program before we lose it. I need to go off now before we lose this program. Wireless is an issue, you know. Uh, wireless problem. So I have to cut it off now. Before I, Hello?